Hello, and welcome to another episode of Kid Inventor Spotlight, a program at Invention Convention Worldwide and the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation in Dearborn, Michigan. My name is Aaron Wartner with Invention Convention. Today, we are joined by two amazing 10th grade inventors from Singapore, Ritvik and Varun. Welcome, gentlemen. Would you please begin by introducing yourselves and telling us about your invention, Itibo? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Varun. I am currently 16 years old and I'm in grade 10. Last year, I took part in the National Invention Convention in Singapore and as well as in US for the finals. Uh, this year, I'm having my national exams uh, in late October. Yes. Well, hi, everyone. Just like Varun, I'm also 16 years old and I'll be sitting for my, and I'm in, yeah, and I'll be sitting for my year end exams coming late, coming October. Great. Well, uh, thank you for introducing yourselves. Tell us about your invention. Well, our invention is a self-heating lunchbox that is capable of reheating food anywhere, anytime, or like just a flick of a switch. So basically, like you, you, can, you can take this lunchbox anywhere, and all you need to do is to reheat food is just, just flick a switch. You can just flick a switch, and you can start reheating food. So the product is built around convenience for the user, you know, make, make like, you know, giving the user the convenience to actually reheat his food anywhere at any time, you know, without, you know, having a heating source necessarily like an oven or a microwave. Great. So where did you come up with this idea for your invention? So uh, it, last year, we took part in, uh, in this STEMI program, which was the workshop that uh, is conducted before the competition uh, starts. So in the first session itself, uh, when me and Rizik were partnered up to, uh, we decided to partner with each other because we have known each other for a long time. And uh, we decided to just work together to take part in this competition. And uh, during the, uh, this, the first day of the workshop, we were asked to just brainstorm for just about 10 minutes, just to think about a problem that maybe we are currently facing and uh, look, for a, uh, look for a solution to that problem. So we were given like small objects like a small box or chopsticks and a scissors or rubber bands and uh, just really small uh, items. And we decided to just uh, maybe think about a problem that both me and Ridvik face. So the problem that me and, uh, and Ridvik face was that both of us have dietary restrictions and we have to pack our own food uh, to school because and we cannot have food in the canteen because uh, our canteen does not offer uh, many vegetarian options. So the thing is that in the morning when my, when my mom would pack uh, my food for school, it would be prepared really hot and very fresh and it would be very nice. But then the thing is that by the time it's our lunch break, we have uh, the food becomes really cold and it's not very really nice, it's not very enjoyable to eat because all my other friends are having hot and fresh food that is prepared like uh, straight away for them. But our one is uh, made in the morning. So basically, we decided to just uh, take that small box that was in front of us. We just cut a hole in it and we just put chopsticks to show that a wire is going through it. And uh, we decided to uh, say that it's our self heating lunch box that can be used uh, by just uh, pressing a switch. And then uh, by inserting a cable, you can you know, charge up the whole lunch box straight away. Spectacular. Now, once you came up with this idea, um, which had of, of personal meaning to you. You were trying to solve a problem that, that was personal to the both of you. Did you look to see if there were any other inventions out there or products out there like it? What kind of research did you do to figure out this is truly a unique invention? Well, for, in terms of finding the, the uniqueness of the invention, we actually realized that this product was already on the market itself. There were people who were already selling such, such lunch boxes already on on uh, online platforms like Amazon, you know. So that's when we decided, okay, if, if we're gonna create the same product as them, there's gonna be no difference between what they are selling and what we are selling. So we're, going to, we're basically gonna be saying the same thing if you're gonna create the same thing as them. So that's when you realize that we know that there's some things that those lunch boxes didn't have. For example, the ability to actually, you know, uh, run, with, run on a battery and not on a wall outlet. Because we, what we realize is that, right, okay, all the lunch boxes out there, they, they do not work unless they're, con they're connected to a wall outlet. And that makes it rather inconvenient because 
the when, when you're talking about convenience, right, and you're talking about reheating anywhere, anytime, a wall outlet shouldn't be involved because it's not like you're going to found a wall outlet out in the public, out in a jungle, right? So that's when you realize that, okay, these lunch boxes, they don't have the ability to reheat by themselves without the need for a wall outlet. So, you know, this, we said, okay, one of the features we should include in, this, in the design is that it should be self reliant in the sense that it can run by itself on a battery, you know, like how a power bank works. Charge it in the morning and then use it the entire day, and then once you run out of charge, just charge it back again. That was one of the features that we realized that, you know, that actually we could work on, you know, make our product more unique compared to others. And also another feature that we, another problem we realized with the other models is that they were very bulky and heavy in the sense that they were very thick. They all came in thick cuboids. So, and it, and it was really heavy. They weighed around easily seven to eight kgs each. I know that's, that's really ridiculous when it comes to a lunchbox because it's meant to be, you know, lightweight. It needs to be carried around. So we realized that, okay, another, another problem we're supposed to work on is making the lunchbox much lighter and less bulkier. So that you know it can, you can easily sort it into your bag and just take it anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you want. So yeah, that is that those are a few of the problems I realized while researching on the designs. So you truly developed an invention that is very unique. Yes. No one else has created it. Uh, yes. Yeah, but invention is truly unique compared to others. Great, uh, spectacular. Now, how much food can you truly fit into your invention? Uh, right, so basically our lunchbox is meant to be less uh, less tall and more wide. So basically we are able to fit in more uh, a wider area of food inside the lunchbox because we want to make sure that our lunchbox has a more uh, slim profile to be uh, put inside a bag easily. Uh, so we are maybe, uh, maybe a, a bowl of rice or something about uh, um, uh, bread and I think anything which is the size of a normal meal should be able to fit inside that lunchbox. Wonderful. Now, who do you think is the market for your invention? Um, is, is it just uh, school children or uh, young adults like you who are going to school, is, or is there a bigger market? Well, in terms of market for this for the for product, I won't say it's only limited to school students. There's, there's, there's a larger market when, when you look globally in the sense like, because we're not the only, we, we students are not the only ones who face this problem. You know, adults who go to, adults sometimes they may not have ovens and microwaves in their workplaces, you know, which means that they also face the same problem as us. But the difference is that we are in a school, they are in their workplace. So, and also not only adults or, you know, uh, us, it's also camp, so people who go on camps, campus. Not necessarily will they find any sort of heating source in the wild. Unless you're talking about uh, setting up a fire and it's heating up, which is going to take a long time. So you, you won't find that readily available heat source out in the jungle. So and like, as, as I said, a possible target audience for our product would be also campers. And, and when you look at it on a more global scale, that could, if, for example, if you take a country like India, for example, India, many people are vegetarians. The majority of the population is, is vegetarian there. And most of them, they carry lunch boxes to school or work. So, um, so they, they not necessarily will they have the, the, the required gadgets or, you know, microwaves or ovens to reheat their food. So a possible market, a target we're looking at is India. Because we feel that if we can market this product in India and if it clicks there, I think, I think we, we can really see this product going a long way and helping the lives of people, not only in India, but definitely people all over the world who face the same problem. Uh, and I'm sure that even the, in the U.S., there are students who do bring lunch boxes to school, right? Uh, am I right in saying that? Yeah. So yep. this will definitely be uh, helpful in, uh, to, to them as well because they can have really uh, fresh food uh, for them to eat. Yes. So you definitely thought about a very large market, which is uh, yes. Yes. fantastic. Yes, yes. We're looking at a more global scale to apply. Yeah. Great. Well, let's come back to how you might bring this to market. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about your invention first. Uh, during the invention process, uh, you had this idea first and then you kept developing it, developing it further. Tell us about that process of, of perfecting your idea, your invention. Um, what was that like? Yeah, so uh, as I said, uh, in the first one, it was just a simple box and just chopsticks, right? And that was a start. But uh, after that, uh, after that we, we sort of looked at a lot of other companies that make lunch boxes. 
and we looked at their designs and you know uh, what they exactly look like. And because our product is really you know uh, it's an electronic gadget, right? And we didn't want it to look like you know uh, very bulky or very uh, similar to other normal lunch boxes that are out there. We didn't we didn't just want to have a big lid and a one small container. If we wanted it to look very sleek and uh, also something that is uh, able to perform its function very well. So uh, design wise, we decided to you know uh, look for uh, make a lunch box that is rounded at the corners and uh, of a square shape and which is very wide. So uh, and it will be something that's slim so that it will be able to uh, be put inside a bag easily, unlike uh, other lunch boxes that are already out there. So uh, for example, over here actually we have just a, a non-working model of what our lunch box uh, would be looking like. Uh, this we had, we just came this uh, came up with this in like uh, a week or two. We only had uh, I think one week to make this completely. So uh, over here we uh, this lunch box right. The thing about this is that it uses magnets to uh, slide the lid in place. So once it's uh, stuck, it will be slid uh, slid in place and it will not uh, fall out. No food will be able to spill out easily. And uh, also it's more rounded on the sides and it looks uh, more modern looking as well. So uh, your, your finished product about how heavy would it be? We are maybe estimating that it shouldn't be more than 1.5 kilograms at max, uh, but maybe with food inside, maybe about two kilograms, maybe. So very light, even for a small uh, child to carry, correct? Yes, yes. Great. Uh, so about how long did you spend on creating your invention before you went uh, to the competition level? Yeah, so we actually, we only had three weeks to come up with the entire thing. So from the start of the workshop itself, so we had to come up with the video, the, the video pitch. Uh, we had to come up with the invention board, the model. Uh, I had to make some, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, we had to decide what to type up on the invention board, what to include, um, all our brainstorming ideas, changes in design, uh, uh, what components to use, pricing, and uh, everything basically, we only had a short span of about three weeks. And because our national exams were coming up, we had we were even more under pressure to uh, finish this up a bit faster as well because we need to we had to study as well for our exams. So yeah, we didn't have a, a very long time to come up with this, and that's why we couldn't come up with a working prototype because uh, if we had more time, we would definitely be able to come up with a working model to sure. present to the competition. Yeah. So you, you, you took your invention uh, and not only at a, at a more local competition, but you actually went to U.S. Nationals at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit more about that experience there, you know, and, and not only were you there and you participated, but you won. Yeah. Now, t t t tell me about that. What, what did you feel like when you, when you learned that you won? Um, what was it like going to U.S. Nationals? Did you talk to other inventors? Were you inspired? Tell us about that. Well, to be very honest, the, it's a very surreal experience, you know, having the chance to actually go to the U.S., take part in the finals there and winning a award there. It's a very surreal experience. So, if, you see, if you ask us one year back and tell us to dream about this, it, it, it won't like, you know, for us, it's just it like a joke because we, we, we never thought such things would happen to us, you know, especially considering that considering that we were nearing our national exams. So we'd be like, oh, what is this? Are you kidding me? But then, when it, as I said, when you got the chance to actually take up this idea, we really felt that it is something, it's something more personal to us. You know, it's something that we faced and we, we really wanted a solution to it. So we worked towards it and, you know, first we conquered the, national, the, the Singapore round, that, which we did pretty well in. And after that, we were asked to make a video pitch, you know, just explaining our invention, you know, like, you know, how does it work, you know, the, the fundamentals of it. So then we, we recorded a video on it and then we sent it to the US uh, side. And we initially expected us to get rejected because, you know, we thought that we actually, the video pitch, we screwed it up a bit. Like we didn't do so well. But then I think, I think about a week later or so, we were told that we were selected for the finals and then we couldn't believe it basically, like, like, as I said, it was, it was more like a dream. Like, you know, it's a dream that we didn't want to be waking up from. You know, being selected for a, a final competition in the US is not something we both would actually think of, you know, like, you know, saying, okay, I, like, I want to be selected for this thing. It's just not, it's like a dream to us. So, until the day we, we, went, we left for the airport, 
we, we were still living in a dream. We were, we said we were living in a dream. Then yeah, after we, after we reached the airport, we got into flight, it was like, oh, yo, we, we are actually going to the US. And for us, it's the first time, for both of us also, it's the first time we, we, we're going to the US. So it's also, at the same time, it's, an, it's a new travel experience for us. And then when it comes to more in the US, the first day was more of adapting to the time and weather, because definitely it was the complete opposite of what, Sing what Singapore is. Singapore is very hot. And we were also 12 hours in front of the US. So when, by the time we reached the US, we were 12 hours behind and the weather was also pretty cold. So the first day was all was more about adapting to the you know the weather and everything. Then the second day is when we actually started when we actually visited the museum and you know started started actually learning more about the stuff in the Henry Ford Museum, for example, the, the cars that were put on display, you know, and for example, even the airplanes and stuff that were put on the thing. So then, yeah, it was the second day was more about embracing the culture of Henry Ford. Yeah, right. and uh, basically it was really a very uh, nice experience to go there. And uh, we even went to a Greenfield Village, uh, which had uh, Edison's uh, real, uh, the, uh, uh, remaking of, or a renovated version, I think, of uh, Edison's lab laboratory. And we also went around the, the whole, uh, the farm space and everything. And it was really, really nice experience. And it was, uh, very peaceful also because we went in the after in the evening where there were not many people around so and it was really a, a very very different experience from what we have in singapore because since singapore is uh really it's much more small in that sense there's not uh a, a lot of i mean the exhibitions that we have in singapore are really very different compared to what they have in the u.s because in the u.s it's way more open and really the things are it's everything is much bigger over there in uh compared to singapore so it was it, it really it really felt that we were in a different place altogether uh, compared to uh, what we face or what we have in Singapore. And uh, on the third day in which we actually uh, took part in the competition, it was really amazing to see what other students have come up at the at the comp uh, for, for what their ideas were. So I remember one of uh, the inventors uh, who was I think opposite us. He came up with this uh, disaster monitoring device. Uh, which could, uh, I think, alert, uh, 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 alert people as to when uh, a disaster will, might be happening or it will, it will be able to predict using uh, artificial intelligence uh, that, you know, uh, maybe a disaster is coming, so like a tsunami or an earthquake could be coming up. So, and we also are a bit intimidated by that because our product was really a non-working model. It wasn't something that we felt would be able to, you know, maybe win eventually. And, yeah, uh, but... Nevertheless, we still, you know, pressed on and we did our pitch uh, uh, and we managed to get through it. And yes, as a result, we won, which we were really, really surprised by. We, because we were waiting to, you know, on, when they were announcing the names of the competition, we were announced at the end. So we already decided that, okay, we are not going to win the, this time. Uh, so like, you we were pretty down. But then in the end, they shout out my, mine and Ridvik's name. So we were like thinking like, uh, is this real? And yeah. we really... Uh, well, that really very excited, and we uh, went and collect, collected our prize, and it was really a very nice experience to go there. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations. <laughs> now, you got home after winning at U.S. Nationals. Uh, certainly, a lot of your family, your your schoolmates, your teachers were very excited for you, and uh, as they should have been. Have you now continued to think more about your invention? Are you going to? Be inventing other products or or solutions. Where are you at in the invention process now? At the moment, right, because our national exams are around, we we decided to put the thing on hold for now. Maybe for the next one or two months, we're gonna put it on hold. Cause at at this moment, our national exams are a priority. So we decided, okay, for the next one to two months, you know, we're gonna really touch on the thing. Cause we need to study for our exams also. Cause after this, is it's, it's gonna be the next phase of life, which is gonna be very important, you know. So yeah, for the next one or two months, you know, we're not really going to touch up on this thing. But then after the one or two months, we're going to start working on this thing again, you know, trying to make, trying to improvise it further and trying to push for the working prototype as soon as we can. And then in terms of other inventions, at the moment, we don't have, we don't have any, we don't have any plans for other inventions. Excuse me. At the moment, we don't have any plans for other inventions because we, we plan to carry on with this, you know, try, trying to build trying to make this idea, you know, a bit, a bit more bigger, a bit more globally scaled. So, yeah, at this moment, no, no plans for other dimensions, but yeah, sure, maybe in the future, who knows, who knows what the future may hold.
Uh, yeah, and uh, not only that, so after our uh, examinations have ended, definitely we're going to work on the working model. And uh, we plan to probably get a patent for this idea in uh, Singapore. And uh, after that, we, are, we do have uh, some people who are interested in our product and we, they might be looking to invest. Uh, so we are, there are definitely a, a lot of possibilities to make this thing uh, commercially viable to the public. And that's where we eventually want to, we, that's where we want to actually go in the future uh, with this in mind. So, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Um, we look forward to seeing it on the shelves in stores all around the world and of course sold on Amazon. Uh, let me ask some, some, some questions, just more general questions about um, your experience uh, going through the invention convention process. Uh, was this your first year? 2019 was your first year? Yes, that was, yes. that's right. Uh, 2019 was the first year when this was actually introduced to our school, I think. Uh, and it was the first year that the NIC was held, I think, internationally. So, uh, and fortunately, we, we were asked, our school was a part, a part of this competition. Yeah. So let me ask the both of you, why do you think invention conventions invention education in schools is so important. What did you learn from it and what do you think other students can learn from the process? Well, I think honestly, invention starts from when you're, when you're really young, you know, it can be like, it's not something that should be taught when you're like 30 or 40 years old. I think it should be, it's something you should start from when you're young, you know. Yeah, but in, like invention doesn't, invention doesn't mean you have to, you know, go very high tech, you know, solve, like solve huge everyday problems. It can be as simple, it can be simple problems like, you know, clearing your trash, like, you know, find more efficient and more convenient ways to dispose your trash, you know, and yeah, as I think, because when we're young, we're very curious, you know, like, we have very curious minds, you know, we feel like, you know, we want to learn more about this, more about that, so I think that that, that passion, the passion for curiosity is, can actually help, help us, you know, come up with more new ideas, you know, yeah, it's, as a result, yes, I think invention education is key should be actually done when you're actually much younger so that you can, it's sort of the foundation when you're much older, when you actually have the facilities to actually, you know, try to invent stuff on a more bigger scale. Great, any other thoughts on that? Uh, no, I think that's no, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so who inspired you? Uh, you know, it, it, sometimes it takes a lot of different people to, to help you along in your process. Um, who helped you during, as you were creating your invention? Did you have family, a teacher, anyone in particular that you want to talk about or any mentors? Yeah, uh, so we had support from uh, everybody. So I had support from my, from, we both had support from our families. Uh, our teachers, uh, Mr. Quack and uh, Mr. Shah, uh, uh, who helped us out for this year. And last year, Mr. Quack was the person uh, who came with us to the USA to support us. We also had uh, help from, uh, people who are working at IDE Academy. So uh, Miss Reka, she was there to uh, also help us out with the whole invention process. And she was a facilitator for the workshops. So definitely she has, she was able to uh, make us brainstorm or think even further as to uh, on our product and um, really expand our, expand our view on this thing. So, and uh, also, my, my dad, uh, when both of us were having the video pitch, my dad was the one who helped in uh, taking the video and he also, you know, gave us ideas on the scripting for the, uh, for the video pitch. So we really have been having support from all, all views, from everybody. Well, a person I would like to actually, get, uh, was that really, really, really like the time from the bottom of my heart is actually Mr. Quack. He has really been, been there with us through every single high and low, like, Whenever we needed help, we went to him. He got back to us as soon as possible. So honestly, whatever we have today wouldn't be possible majority without his help because he really helped us take in to, yeah, he really helped us through a lot. Like every single problem we had, he tried to solve it for us no matter what it meant for him. He was very selfless when it came to, you know, helping us, when it, helping us bring this thing out. So yes, I would really like to actually Heart, give a heartfelt thank you to him because yes, this wouldn't be possible without the commitment and effort from his side. I, I appreciate uh, and, and, and we all at Invention Convention appreciate you specifically naming not only your family, um, but uh, the organizations, your school, and particular individuals who helped you in your process. 
Uh, you mentioned ID Academy, and I just, uh, for those who are watching this video today, want to share with you, ID Academy is the uh, affiliate of uh, the Invention Convention Worldwide based in Singapore. Last year, they had 230 participants uh, throughout Singapore uh, engaged in invention education, and 11 of those students went on to the U.S. Nationals, uh, including you two. So again, congratulations. Um, do you have, do, do the two of you have any idols that you look up to? Um, people who you think are amazing inventors or that, that inspire you. So you may not necessarily, it could be a family member, it could be um, a famous inventor. Any idols that come to mind? Uh, I, 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 we didn't, I think, uh, yes, I've uh, known people, I don't know, like Steve Jobs or uh, Bill Gates, you know, these kind of people who have really come out from uh, humble backgrounds and they have really created something that's very, very unique and something that uh, that we all have to use today, which is very important in our daily lives. So it's really, uh, it is inspiring in a lot of ways to see how that, how they have been able to go from point A to point B uh, really effectively and how they are able to, you know, uh, come out uh, and bring out their products to the world to make a really, to make the world a better place. So, and that's the, it's the same goal which we had in mind. We want to make uh, the world a better place by just solving simple problems. So just the simple problem of the food not being uh, hot, that's a really simple thing, but it's something that's faced by everybody. And it is a, it is a irritating thing to have cold food uh, every time during lunch. So just, uh, it's really amazing to see how these inventors have a sort of similar journey to us in, in a small way that, you know, they have a problem that they want to solve. And it's something that's faced by everybody. So, and it makes life more convenient for everybody. So, yeah, yes. Great, excellent. So, a um, couple additional questions before we end today. Why do you think, you know, inventing is so important? Uh, we know now in the world that we live in and certainly in the past going forward, uh, we need bright young minds like the two of you. But in your own words, why do you think inventing is important? I think at the end of the day, inventing is what solves our daily problems. You know, when, when someone comes out of the initiative to actually try to invent something, that's when our, our problems are being solved. Not only is the, is the person solving his or her problem, but he's also solving millions of people's problems without him knowing. For example, for best example is our lunchbox. We, we, we personally, we, we wanted to solve it. We, we made this lunchbox to solve all of our problems. But after, after a while, we realized that not only are we solving our problems, we're also solving other people's problems. Millions of people who, who have, whose voices are not heard, you know, people, there are definitely people out there who wish they had a self eating lunch, lunch box, but you know, didn't really get the opportunity to voice out their, their concern, you know, regard, on regarding on not having a, a lunch box that is capable of reheating food. So yeah, I think my, my view on, invent, on inventing is that you have to take the first step to, to solve, to make the world a better place. You can't, expect the, you can't expect the world to solve its problems by itself. There must be certain individuals, you know, with a certain desire, a certain, a certain you know, a goal in mind, you know, to, to solve a problem. Because as I said before, a problem, solving a problem of yours might also solve a problem of a million other people. So yeah, invention has to start from yourself. And then hopefully, if, it, if it's good enough, it can, it, can, it can impact millions of lives. Yeah, and uh, personally, for me, I feel that invention is uh, definitely something that's very important. You know, in today's world, people are not just aiming to, you know, work their nine-to-five jobs. People are trying to do something that's definitely more innovative. They, they, they want to do something for the, on their own as well and not just work for uh, somebody. And by using this uh, platform to uh, invent and create their own, uh, uh, to create their own products that will help the world they will be helping out to make the world a better place. Yeah. And what advice, thank you for that. And, and what advice do you have for other students who may have never participated in an invention convention or invention education program? Maybe they're at home right now, uh, not able to go to school. Um, what advice do you have for students uh, as they might say, wow, these two guys are just so inspiring, but where do I start? What would you say to them? Uh, so a simple thing is firstly just identifying the problem that you face 
and after you identify the problem, think of a solution. So there are many ways uh, to go around solving one problem. So look at the way that is the, 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 uh, the most convenient that's not, uh, not only for you, but for everybody. Look for something that will be able to benefit everybody around you. And uh, once, you, once you have identified the solution to your problem, start working on it. So come up with your target audience, who you are exactly going to reach out to. Uh, look at uh, how, what, are the specific, what are the details of your product. So uh, what exactly is it that your product is going to do? Have a, you know, uh, have a clear goal in mind as to where you want to go with this product. Uh, yeah. And yes, building a performance point. If 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 you have with a problem, but then your solution is already in the market, don't give up. Try to try try take it as a challenge to build on from what's ex existing in the market. For example, take a printer. I'm sure that when people saw printers at first, they're like, "Oh, it's a printer is just like that. You know, it's, it's just a box. It's able to print up print paper." Is able to print on papers, but then they did, but then there also people who took the printer and made it, made better versions of the of the printer. You know, for example, the the printers we use in offices, these big ones. I'm sure people people didn't people didn't think that oh you know a printer is just going to be a simple box, a small box. So if you ever come across an idea, if you come come across a solution that's already in the market, don't give up. <laughs> Find new ways to make your idea better. You know, improvise on the product. You know, make include features that are not found in the thing, like, sorry, in the existing model. So, as I said, don't give up just because your product is on the market. You know, think of the challenge to make it even better. You know, make it even more com competitive with, 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 with models on the market. So, yeah, that, that's an advice I'd give to fellow inventors who actually want to invent. Yeah, great. Now, you're a team. What if, do you think you would have been able? individually to figure out this invention? Um, how, as a team, did you work together? Right, uh, so working individually, it is possible that yes, we can get to a certain point somewhere individually because uh, yeah, we do have our own thinking and we, we have, we are definitely capable, everybody's capable of working on their own, but people do choose to work in teams because they can have different perspectives, different angles of looking at things because not everybody is the same as you. So you need uh, people to advise you on maybe where you're going wrong or on what can be better in the invention process. So for example, in a lunchbox, in this lunchbox, for example, maybe I thought of something that is uh, maybe not uh, innovative enough. And Ridwick, you know, came in and he told me that maybe you could work on this part uh, uh, of, of the product and make this part even better. So we need people to advise us on where we're going wrong and maybe on how to work at it better. And working in a team is also uh, a good thing because you can get, uh, get from point A to point B much faster than you would on your own. So uh, definitely, for example, for the both of us, if I would definitely not be able to finish this whole thing in three weeks if, without Ridvik. So we definitely need to work uh, hand in hand to get the whole thing uh, done together. Great, well, uh, definitely a good vote for people inventing in teams. That's wonderful. Uh, anything else that you want to share with those who are watching? Well, okay, I'd, I'd like to just share something. That, like, don't give up, like, don't give up just because you think your invention is bad. Like, if you, personally, yes, our inventions might look like a joke to us, you know, we're like, oh, my, my, my product looks trash. But then, just remember that just because you feel something, it doesn't mean your product is going to, going to become a huge flop on the market. If you feel the thing is trash, Try to make it better in, in standards that you think is good. Just because it's bad, don't give up on it, you know? They say, you know, like, for example, this lunchbox, if I thought it was bad, I could have just thrown it in the rubbish bin. In the rubbish bin saying, okay, I'm not going to work on it anymore. But then you must have a, a growth mindset that says that, okay, if, the, if this if plan A is not going to work out, try plan B. Who knows? It might work out in plan B. No one knows what. So you must, like, explore your possibilities when it comes to inventing. Don't stick to one road and expect it to give you expect to lead you to, to, an, uh, to you don't expect to be an endless road with one road. You try the other road, you know, who knows? It, it might actually lead you to a very nice place. So don't stick, don't be stagnant to one type of don't be stagnant to one type of way. Try try a few other ways, you know, when it comes to inventing. Because at the end of the day, inventing is not only a, it's not a fixed journey. It can be an endless journey. You know, who knows? You might make an empire out of your out of your invention. Excellent. Uh, well 
again, I want to thank you both very much for uh, taking the time to speak with us today as part of uh, Kid Inventor Spotlight. Uh, you're not exactly kids, um, you're a uh, young gentleman. So uh, again, congratulations, not only on your, on your win at US Nationals, uh, your participation at Idea Academy in Singapore, uh, but also on your continued path to uh, develop your product, develop your invention into something that uh, you do feel has a tremendous amount of market potential and also the opportunity to solve pro people's problems all throughout the world. Uh, for those of you, again, who are watching, Singapore Nationals 2020 will be held on November 16, 2020. And for more information on that program, you can visit www.inventionconvention.org forward slash Singapore. And to all of our students currently and those budding inventors out there and those innovators who are thinking, hmm, maybe I want to be like uh, Varun and Ritvik. Invention Convention Worldwide is available to help you. Again, at www.inventionconvention.org. And uh, Varun Ritvik, we congratulate you on your dedication to your passions and perseverance to see it through. I want to say thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you.